CataractCoach.com, why are we making a small capsule rexus in this case? Take a look. We've already made the incision. We'll put the forceps in the eye, and we'll start the capsule rexus right here in the middle, poking in with the forceps. Try to get this started. Now, this patient has a very thin capsule, and you may have also noticed it's a very big eye, very large anterior segment. The white-to-white -white measurement of this eye is quite large, about 13 millimeters. It has a massive dilation of greater than 10 millimeters of dilation. So when we make this rexus, look at the forcep tips. Remember how I've marked them off? And from the tip, two and a half and five millimeters. When I measure this rexus, look, it actually is okay. That's a five millimeter capsule rexus. It just looks so small because this eye is so big. This is a very myopic eye. This is an eye with an axial length of about 30 millimeters and a very large anterior segment. Again, the white-to-white -white measurement, the corneal diameter, is about 13 millimeters. The lens nucleus also is quite large. So we did some hydrodissection there. We have rotated the nucleus. Because the caps rex is 5 millimeters and the diameter of the lens, the cataract, is much, much bigger, probably 10 or 11 millimeters, we'll need to chop this into pieces to take it out of the bag. So first we'll chop it there. We've got two halves separated. And I'll try to bring out a half, and it just doesn't want to come. And that's because the nucleus has such a large size, large diameter. So let's chop a quarter off. There we go. And we can bring the quarter out of the capsule bag. So one quadrant is up here. So we'll take that one out, then we'll take the next quadrant. We can keep sub-chopping and bringing this out of the capsule bag. So again, this is a large nucleus. Nucleus has a diameter of probably 10 or 11 millimeters. And this patient has a capsule rexus of five. Now why do we still make a small five millimeter capsule rexus? It's small in comparison to the size of the lens here. And the answer is because of our IOLs. Even for this large eye, the IOL that we have is a six millimeter optic. And in this patient's power, the uh, lenses with a larger optic that are, is a foldable acrylic six and a half millimeter optic lens available in the U.S., but not in her power. This patient's going to receive an IOL that has a very low power, so just uh, two or three diopters in strength, and that's going to leave her with a myopic outcome. So a little bit of a chemosis there. We'll just push that down with the spatula, switch over to the IA probe, and we'll clean up here. Now, these very large myopic eyes, sometimes, like in this case, the capsule can be quite thin. You want to be very delicate here, very gentle. A ruptured posterior capsule with vitreous prolapse in a large myopic eye is going to be a very high risk of retinal break and retinal detachment. So definitely be very judicious here, very cautious. Okay, if you have to leave a little bit of a you know, lens scar tissue or ad adherent uh, lens material, but certainly don't risk breaking the capsule bag here. So cleaning up all the cortex, nice and easy, and then we'll get ready to put our lens in. In addition for the lens calculations, we've talked about this before, do not let these patients end up hyperopic. Never aim for a plano outcome, even when you're using your fancy lens calculation formulas, whether you're using the lattice super formula, the Barrett formula, or you're using some other mac, uh, modification to account for the ultra high myopia, never aim for Plano. These patients don't want to be Plano. When they start off so myopic, like this lady who's about minus 15 to minus 20 range, if this patient ends up in the minus 1, 2, or minus 3 range, even, that'll be a huge success. So, fill in the capsule bag. There's our viscoelastic cohesive, and you can see there's the outline of the capsule rexus. Looks really good. Let's put the lens inside. Again, this is a three-piece acrylic lens, a very um, a small dioptric power. So nice and easy. Get that leading haptic again. It opens up just beautifully, just like that. That looks great. There's the optic, and the trailing haptic will dial into the bag as well. And you see, once we get this lens in the capsule bag and set it up, it's a really nice overlap. That rexus is overlapping the optic just beautifully. Lens looks very nicely centered. 
that we can switch over to enhance the uh, red reflex. And you see there's a beautiful overlap there. So we'll take out the viscoelastic and finish this case up. And then I will skip to the end here. If you look at the overlap here in this photograph, you can see that certainly that's a very nice position of the IOL. And there's a good overlap of the optic by the capsorexis for 360 degrees. And what looked like a very small capsulorexis at the beginning of the case turned out to be just about perfect. So important lesson here, always measure before you make the capsulorexis. And thank you for watching.